Hello there and welcome back to another live workshop. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to use have, has and had correctly. So here's the plan for this lesson. We will start by talking about the basics of form. That is how to choose between have, has and had for different subjects. Then we'll talk about the uses of the verb have and then we'll discuss um, how to decide if the verb have should be used as a state or an action verb in a sentence. That is where you can use having the ing form correctly. And then we have four exercises in which we'll practice choosing between have and has, and then choosing between have, has, and had for the past tense. And then we'll practice using having correctly. And finally, we'll discuss how to make negatives and questions with the verb have. Now before we start the lesson, I just wanted to point out you can download the full lesson notes with all of the exercises and all of the examples using the link in the description of this video. Alright, so let's start with the basics of where to use have, has and had. Now what you see on the screen is the full chart with all the rules you need to know for this verb. Now this chart is also available in the file that you can download um, from the link in the description. So you can see here that we have three sections. The first section deals with affirmative sentences. Affirmative just means positive. So affirmative sentences are positive statements. The second section is about negative sentences and the last section deals with questions. We'll go over all of these rules but for now uh, to understand the basics, we're just going to focus on the first section, affirmative sentences. Remember that affirmative just means positive statements. So what we see here is if the subject of a sentence is I, you, we, they, or any plural noun, then we use have as the verb. If the subject is he, she, it, or any singular noun, then we use has. Now this is in the present. If we're talking only about the past, it's very easy. As you can see here, we use had for all subjects. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, the pronoun I is not plural. And the pronoun you could be singular or plural depending on the situation. So why are we mixing these pronouns with plurals? Well, we're not. The rule is simply that if the subject is I, or if the subject is you, or if the subject is we, they, or any plural, then for all of these subjects, we just use have. Okay, if the subject is he, she, it, or any singular, we use has. We're not saying that I is plural. Okay, keep that in mind. Now, if the sentence is in the past tense, of course, we just use had. So with this knowledge, let's talk about the various uses of the verb have. You see six uses listed on the screen. These are the most common and the most important uses of have. The first use is ownership. For example, we have a car. That means we own a car. So the verb have means own here. The second use is relationship. Bruce has a wife and two kids. Obviously, it doesn't mean that he owns them. Uh, here, the verb has just shows a relationship between Bruce and his family. Now, note that we're using has because the subject of the sentence is Bruce and Bruce is a singular noun. Now, if the subject were I, we would say I have a wife and two kids. But here, Bruce is singular, so we're saying has. Now, use number three is to express features. What is a feature? A feature is a characteristic or a quality of a person or thing. For example, Anu has a fantastic singing voice. The voice is a quality or characteristic of Anu. We say Anu has because again Anu is a singular noun like Bruce. The next use is to talk about illness, that is being sick. I have a really bad headache today. That means I am suffering from a headache today. Use number five is to talk about experiences. For example, I hope you have a great time at the party. 
That means I hope you enjoy yourself. I hope your experience is good. I hope your experience is fun. So the verb have is expressing uh, experience in this sentence. <clears throat> now here the verb have is experience, um, expressing positive experience, but we can also talk about negative experiences uh, with the verb. In phrases like to have trouble, to have difficulty, to have problems, etc. And we will look at uh, some examples of that later on in this lesson. And finally, the last use, use number six, is to talk about eating or drinking. My colleagues usually have lunch at 1 p.m. Now, we can also say, my colleagues usually eat lunch at 1 p.m. And the meaning would be the same. The verb have just means eat in the sentence. Uh, I just want to point out that we're saying have, not has, because my colleagues is a plural subject. If it was one colleague, we would say has, but more than one colleague. Colleagues is a plural, so we're using have as the verb. So as you can see here, there are lots of different uses, different meanings for the verb have, aren't there? And actually, if you go to your dictionary, you might find that there are even more meanings, even more uses for this verb, but these six are the most important. Now, there is an important point here that you need to know about, and that has to do with state and action meanings of the verb. Now, these four here, the first four uses are actually states. That means they express some general situation. When I say, uh, we have a car, in this first use, there's no action being performed here. It just expresses a state of ownership. Similarly, Bruce has a wife and two kids. Again, there's no action here. This sentence just expresses a state of relationship. And it's the same with number three and four as well. They're general situations, they're not actions. So for this reason, it is always wrong to use uh, ing or continuous forms in these uses. If you say, we're having a car, Bruce is having a wife and two kids, Anu is having a fantastic singing voice, I'm having a really bad headache today, all of those are wrong. In fact, it's a very common mistake. This is something that I hear a lot of my students uh, say, uh, and this is something that you should avoid. If you're using the verb have as a state verb, don't use an ing form with it. However, in uses five and six, to talk about experiences or to talk about eating or drinking, you can use continuous forms. You can say, I'm having a great time at this party. That doesn't express a general situation. It, exp it expresses something I am experiencing right now. In the same way, we can also say, my colleagues are having lunch now. Because remember, have just means eat in this context, and that expresses an action. And we can talk about it in the form of a continuous action. Um, also, you can talk about the past. That is, you can use past continuous forms with experiences or to talk about eating and drinking. By that I mean you can say, I was having a great time at the party, but then I had to leave. Okay, was having is a past tense use. My colleagues were having lunch when our boss came into the office and told everybody to get back to work. Okay, so my colleagues were having lunch is a past tense use. So the thing you have to remember is that if you're talking about ownership, relationship, a feature or a quality, or an illness, these are all situations and you should not use ing forms with them. If you're talking about experiences, or you're talking about eating or drinking, then it's okay to use having. So with all of this in mind, I think you now have enough knowledge for us to go to the first exercise in our lesson. You see the form chart again. We're going to practice putting have and has in the correct place. I'm going to show you 10 sentences. In each one, I want you to tell me if you would use have or has. So let's go to the exercise. In each sentence, fill in the gap with have or has. I'm going to put right here on the side, uh, I'm going to put the rule here. Remember, I, you, we, they, have, he, she, it, has. All right, here's the first one. 
I N, a friend who works at IBM. N means blank, so I N, a friend who works at IBM. Would you say have or has? Well, the subject is I, so this should be have. I have a friend who works at IBM. Lucy N, a large family. Have or has? Well, Lucy is the name of a girl, so it's like saying she. So she has. Lucy has a large family. Now notice here that both of these sentences talk about relationship. I have a friend means it expresses a relationship between me and another person who's my friend. Lucy has a large family also expresses a relationship with her family. But here we say have because the subject is I. And here we say has because the subject is Lucy. Number three. Feel free to ask if you mm, any questions. What's the subject? The subject is you. So have. Feel free to ask if you have any questions. The Smiths mm, pizza for dinner every day. Have or has? The Smiths means the Smith family. This is a plural subject, so it's like saying they. Right? So, the Smiths have pizza for dinner every day. Next one, Sushil, mm, an MS in electrical engineering. Sushil is uh, a male name. It's like saying he. So, Sushil has an MS in electrical engineering. We, mm, a house in California. We have a house in California. Now, before we go on to the next one, I just want to point out in number four, have means eat, right? And then in number five, Sushil has an MS means he owns that degree. He possesses that degree. In number six, we own a house in California is what it means. Whenever you see sentences with have, has, or had, just think about the use that that sentence expresses. Think about the meaning because that will often help you to decide between the uh, present tense or the base form of the verb and the ing form of the verb, okay? All right, number seven, my cell phone, mm, a 16 megapixel camera. My cell phone has a 16 megapixel camera. Why has? Because my cell phone is a singular subject. It's like saying it, so it has is correct. And this sentence talks about a quality. So the 16 megapixel camera is a feature of my cell phone. Number eight, we mm, a flight to Sao Paulo on Saturday morning. We have a flight to Sao Paulo. This sentence actually talks about a planned experience or an event or a trip in the future. Okay, we have a flight to Sao Paulo on Saturday morning. That is a time in the future. Okay, number nine, I always mm, coffee first thing in the morning. I always drink coffee is what we mean. The subject is I, so I always have coffee. And number 10, Clara, mm, no time to cook in the morning because she leaves early for work. Clara is a girl's name, so Clara has no time to cook in the morning because she leaves early for work. How many of these 10 did you get right? If you're watching this live, let me know in the chat box. If you're watching the replay, let me know in the comments section below. Okay, now we're going to do our second exercise. In this exercise, you have to choose between have and has and also had. So we're going to add had to the mix here. So this means some sentences will be in the past tense. And if a sentence is in the past tense, you use had. If a sentence is in the present, then you use have or has depending on the subject. All right, let's uh, go to the exercise. Let me add here that if a sentence is in the past tense, you should use had. I forgot to put had over here in the, um, in, in the rubric, in the heading. Just remember that if a sentence is in the past, you have to use had. I mm, cereal and orange juice for breakfast today. Have, has, or had. What would you use? Actually, the correct answer is had here. Because by today, we mean this morning. Okay, I had cereal and orange juice in the past. 
It was the recent past, but it was still in the past, so had. Number two, Radha, mm, beautiful eyes, doesn't she? What would you put here? Have, has, or had? Well, the question tag here says, doesn't she? So we are talking about the present. So Radha has beautiful blue eyes. Again, if you think about it, we don't normally say Radha had beautiful blue eyes in the past and now she doesn't have them anymore. That doesn't make sense. So has is correct. Number three, have you ever thought about getting into acting? You, mm, a great talent for it. What do you think? You have a great talent for it because we're giving that person a compliment. Okay, and we don't give past compliments to people, we give present compliments. We're saying that, that we're saying a good thing, we're praising that person's talent. Number four, we mm, a lot of difficulty finding John's house on the day of the party. So on the day of the party tells you that this sentence talks about a past. That's a past expression. So we had a lot of difficulty. Number five, I'm taking the kids to the amusement park tomorrow. They always, mm, a lot of fun there. They always, so it talks about a general thing. They always have a lot of fun there. Number six, Ross, mm, a lot of money, but he lost it all on the stock market. So the money was there, but he lost it all. So now it's gone. So we are talking about the past. Ross had a lot of money, but he lost it all on the stock market. Number seven, what many guests like about this hotel is that it mm, its own gym and swimming pool. So guests still like this fact about the hotel. So if they still like it, we need a present tense verb. So what many guests like about this hotel is that it has its own gym and swimming pool. Number eight, we mm, a small accident on the way here. So as we were coming here, an accident happened to us. So we had a small accident on the way uh, on the way here. Number nine. Okay, this is a little tricky. I wish I mm, my glasses right now. I often mm, trouble reading without them. So there are two blanks. In the first blank, what we actually have is uh, a